Hi Jun。Hello， 你好，你好，你好。你好，花兰嘿。<笑><笑>你好，你好。嗯、uh, ，我要给你看一个东西，就是我会模仿你。啊、uh, ，就是模仿你小时候做的这个，呀呀呀！啊，说给你给我看一下，没有，就这个，呀呀呀！但但我我我其实也不是记得很清楚，你给我怎么做出来？呃、uh, ，是你小时候做的。哦、uh, ，就是就是我也知道有这个东西，但我不记得为什么我当时会做这个东西。没有，这个东西在 YouTube 很火，<笑>现在也很火。<笑><笑>谢谢你们的厚爱。<笑><笑>呃，然后呃，过一个月，我的生日是九月十三号，然后我想，嗯，九月十三号，然后你可以唱一点那个《对不起，我爱你》吗？啊，哦，生日的时候唱的。还没告诉你，对不起，我爱你，没有你，我无法呼吸。好，谢谢，好好听啊，谢谢，啊、呃，然后还想问，就是，啊、呃，你，就只有你和 Dino 没有 Instagram， 然后就想问，什么时候？啊，对。啊，已经，我现在就是已经在弄了，然后在等那个公司的回答，可能那个公司说 OK 了过后就能发了。啊、oh, ，OK， 好的，知道了。嗯。因为可能可能在等着等他们答应什么的，就不知道什么时候可以好。啊、oh, ，好的，嗯，好吧，嗯，拜拜，拜拜。Hi there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before we begin, I just wanted to say that the Chinese subtitles and the English translation subtitles were done by me. And so please like this video and subscribe to my channel for an increase in production value of future videos. Um, so let's get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So today I'm going to be talking about my fan call that I had with Jun from Seventeen. Um, it was actually my first time applying for any fan call, so I'm really surprised that I got in. I applied through Yijiyu, and the English name of that website is With Fans, and it's a Chinese website. And it was also my first time buying from them as well, so my experience went very, very well. So I posted on my trade Instagram as well, asking you guys to submit questions about the fan call. So I'll be answering those questions a little bit later, but I want to talk about my experience and what went down in the fan call first. And by the way, this jumper is the jumper that I was wearing during the fan call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So what happened in the fan call? Um. So firstly, the Yujuu staff called me through WeChat video call, um, and then they asked me for my ID. So I I held up my ID so they could see it, and then I just had to wait for Jun. <laughs> so I could hear him talking in. Uh, Korean to the girl before me, and the funny thing is, I could also hear Jonghan talking, which really、um, hyped me up a little bit,、um, because there were four members of Seventeen doing that fan call at the same time. So there was Jun, Jonghan, Mingyu, and Sungwan, and I'm assuming that they were all in the same room or something, and that's why I could hear everyone else. So after this little waiting period, Jun appeared, and I got a little bit flustered.、Um, so as you can see in the video, we spent. Quite a long time just saying hello, hello to each other. So I had thought really hard about how to make him laugh and how to make him happy, and just to break the ice a little bit. And so I did horanghe at him, and he kind of laughed and he did horanghe back. But I don't think he was very willing to do it. And then I impersonated this. Thing that he did when he was a kid. So Jun used to be a child actor, right? So there was all these things that he did for his dramas, and there was this one nyak nyak thing, which I found really cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And、um, I guess the decision that I made to impersonate him when he was little was a good choice because it made him genuinely laugh, and I feel like we talked quite naturally after that.、Uh, then I knew that I wanted to ask him to sing something. So I told him that it was gonna be my birthday soon, which is true,、uh, and I asked him to sing a little bit of his "Do Buchi Wa Ai Ni," 
which is I'm Sorry I Love You and if you haven't watched it I highly suggest that you watch his cover of it it's really good and it's funny because when I asked him to sing I'm Sorry I Love You he also laughed because uh, I'm Sorry I Love You is quite a sad song so to sing it for someone's birthday is I don't know maybe he found it a bit funny but then he did sing it and it was so beautiful and I actually still listen to that every day it's the best kind of lullaby that I've ever had and then the final thing that I asked him was about his Instagram. So 11 out of 13, 17 members already have Instagram and only him and Dino don't have Instagram yet. So I really wanted to ask him when he was going to get Instagram and actually I didn't even have to finish my question. It's like he already knew what I was going to ask and he said, he said that he was preparing to get Instagram but he just needs the company's approval. So I don't know what company he's talking about. But I think he means Pledis or Instagram or something. So hopefully we'll get some Jin selfies one day. And yeah, that was basically the fan call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some general thoughts that I have about this fan call. Firstly, Jun is really talkative in Chinese. I feel like because Korean is his second language, he sometimes has to think about the grammar and stuff, which is very understandable. Like I have to think about grammar as well when I speak in my second languages. But yeah, Jun talked a lot. I feel like he kept making these funny comments that he wouldn't normally make if he was speaking in Korean, so I'm so glad that I got to talk to him. And then another really sweet thing that I noticed after watching the video back a couple of times is at the very end when I'm asking him about his Instagram, the staff says, oh, time's up, time's up, right? And then he, he says okay and then he continues to talk and so I thought that was really sweet. I know um, sometimes when the staff says time up, either the idol or the fan just kind of trails off and stops talking and then they take the phone away. So I'm really happy that he got to keep talking. <laughs> and then another kind of interesting thing that I noticed was um, the fact that he <laughs> looks at himself in the video call to fix his hair. Because I, I saw him lean forward and he was like fixing his fringe, which was really cute as well. <coughs> All right, and now I want to move on to a couple of questions that some people asked me and I actually want to start off with um, two things that you guys are probably too polite to ask. So the first question that you're probably wondering in the back of your mind is how can I speak Chinese? And the answer is I am Australian born Chinese and even though I am ABC, I am more of a... I would say I'm very in tune with Chinese culture and Chinese language. Back in 2010, I got into C-pop and I've been pretty into Chinese entertainment and Chinese variety shows ever since then. So I've always kept up my Mandarin. I learned how to read and write Mandarin through watching dramas and variety shows. Yes, you can do that. Um, so yeah, that's why I was able to talk to Jun pretty fluently in Chinese. Second question that you're probably wondering to yourself is why is the video recorded on a second phone and not screen recorded on my actual phone? The answer is because when the staff called me, I got really flustered and I just forgot to screen record. I've been kidding myself for the past few days saying that the screen record didn't work and it didn't save, but the truth is I just forgot. So, sad. Next time, and there will be a next time definitely, I am gonna remember to screen record it. Alright, so now moving on to some questions that people submitted. So the first area of interest was generally around how much did I spend to get into the fan sign and how many albums did I buy to get into the fan sign. So for this fan sign, I did a group order and I ordered 39 albums in total. I had a set number of albums that I wanted to order, so I knew that I wanted to order 39 to get three sets of OT13 EGU fan sign photo cards. Out of all of the 39 albums, I'd say around 10 of them are mine and the rest and the rest of the inclusions are for the people who joined my group order. So thank you for everyone who joined my group order, I appreciate all of you a lot. And then just general advice that I would give on managing your finances during fan signs is firstly don't spend more than you can afford. Uh, always try to do group orders if you can because you find that a lot of people are quite willing to help you get into a fan sign by buying a photo card or buying an album or buying some inclusions. So set yourself a budget and think about how many albums you are definitely going to buy. Don't suddenly buy more than you think you need. I know for me I bought 39 but at the very end right before I ordered the albums I was like 
should I get another 10 just in case? And I'm really glad that I didn't because I think it would not have made a difference. I've seen so many people who go all in and try to get into a fan sign and buy so many albums and use up um, all of their credit on their credit card and they don't get in. And then not only do they have to deal with the disappointment of not getting into the fan sign, but then they also have to spend the next couple of months paying back their debt which would just add insult to injury. So definitely um, buy what you can afford. So that's just my little bit of advice on the financial aspect of a fan sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the next question was also from someone on Instagram and they asked me, was it hard to apply? Um, so I guess this question is pretty broad in, was it hard to apply? I think procedurally for me, it was pretty easy because I can read Chinese obviously and I have a pretty good understanding of how Chinese websites work in general so ordering the albums and navigating my way around Yujuyu website was pretty easy for me the WeChat video aspect and just the WeChat aspect of it was not too bad for me uh, but when I think about was it hard to apply in terms of emotionally <laughs> yes it was um, quite emotionally taxing on me I remember before I applied when they were doing round one, round two of the applications, I couldn't sleep because I kept thinking, should I apply for round three? If I apply for round three, what am I going to say to him? If I get in, what am I going to say to him? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I just kept thinking about all the possibilities that could happen and I lost so much sleep because of it. And then when I actually did apply for it, after the application closed, I couldn't sleep as well because I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm counting down to the day when the results are going to be announced. And I kept waking up in the middle of the night thinking that it was the day that the results were going to be announced. And then when the results were announced, I also couldn't sleep because I was too excited and I kept thinking about it. So yeah, I would say emotionally it was quite hard for me, maybe because it was my first fan sign and because I really wanted to get into it. So that's why it was a bit emotionally difficult. <laughs> Okay, the next question is how did you prepare for the fan sign? So there are a lot of different things you have to do to prepare for a fan sign. I'm sure a lot of people have been to concerts and things and you know how to prepare for concerts. You get your makeup on, you pick out a nice outfit, you print out the concert ticket if you need to and things like that. Um, but video calls at home are really different. So the first thing that I spent a lot of time overthinking, as I said before, was thinking about what I was going to say to Jun. So first thing is I prepared by thinking of the things that I wanted to say to him. Second thing that I prepared was I prepared my general setup. So I prepared a phone stand, I prepared a light that went over the phone stand, and I prepared a second camera and a second phone stand to film in a second person perspective. So there's also that technology prep that you have to do if you want to record the fan sign in a different way. And then I also prepared, I put like a chair, I made a nice background and um, I guess after that the other things you have to do is do your makeup, do your hair, um, pick an outfit and all of the things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next question is a question that is personally quite interesting. It is, do you like him more or less after talking to him? And I thought Wanu was your bias. <laughs> Um, so, to answer the first part of your question, I definitely like Jun a lot more after talking to him because I just feel like he's, he was so genuine in the call and he was really speaking his mind and it was just so cute. And seeing his face up close in a video call just is really different. He looks different when you see him up close, very up close, but he's also so handsome and so cute and I just enjoyed talking to him so much, you, I can't even describe it. And then uh, you thought Wanu was my bias, so I guess when I started liking Seventeen, I jumped straight into liking Wanu, and Wanu was my bias, but then I also feel like I didn't have much opportunity to explore the lesser known members, if I can say it like that. Definitely in previous years, Jun didn't have a lot of screen time. He didn't have a lot of lines in songs, and he didn't have a lot of center time as well, so I didn't really um, get to know Jun as much as I did for the other members, but then I was watching Chao Ying Janji, so I was watching CYZJ, and after watching that show, I just feel like 
I knew him a little bit better. And I think as well, the language connection is really important. So the fact that we are both native Chinese speakers actually makes quite a lot of difference. So I would say Jun is my bias now. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next question is, would you talk to Jun again or another member? So before I actually talked to Jun, my plan was talk to Jun for this round and be chill and be speaking Chinese and not be too stressed about the language barrier. And then I wanted to talk to Mingyu because apparently Mingyu is really fun to talk to. And then my third person that I wanted to talk to was Wanu. But after talking to Jun, I think I'm a bit addicted to talking to him. So I think uh, if I ever got the chance to do another fan call, I would also talk to Jun again. Okay, and nextly is any tips or lessons that you learnt? So I have a lot of tips and lessons that I learnt. First thing, very important, don't get flustered. When I saw his face come up on my phone screen, um, my mind honestly just went blank and I couldn't think of what to say to him, I just kept looking at his face. Luckily though, I had a piece of paper on my lap which said what I was going to say to him, otherwise I would have forgotten, I think. Another interesting tip that you might not think about is there's actually a lot of background noise when you do these fan calls. Oftentimes, there's several members in a room and they're all doing fan calls at the same time. When you see photos of the idols doing fan calls, you see that most of them have earphones in because if they didn't have earphones in, it would be wild, like it would be crazy. So just be mindful that there is a lot of background noise. Um, speak loudly when you talk to them, otherwise they might not be able to hear you. A lot of the time, um, I felt like both of us had to repeat things that we said because we couldn't hear the other person or we were speaking over the other person. This brings me on to my next point, which is listen carefully to what they are saying to you and don't be too focused on what you are going to say to them. I know a lot of people prepare what they're going to say to their idol, but I would also leave it open for just some natural interaction and really listen to what they say to you and respond naturally to what they say. I think if I did another fan call with Jun, I wouldn't prepare as many questions and requests. I would just have one or two conversation topics and I would just talk to him because I think that would be really nice to see what his personality is like when you just talk to him. 